Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, she saw monkeys in Rio and got hit by a car in Tangiers. Our first guest just completed her attempt to set a world record as the fastest woman to race six triathlons on six continents in six days. And did she do it? Well, here to share her story, we welcome Portland's own Kelsey Myers. Good to have you with us. Did you do it? I did it, yeah. Awesome. Shocking That's great. Yeah. That's great. The, the biggest concern I had was the logistics of it. Yeah. You know, missing a flight or just anything going wrong. And I did it. So. Why why, why did you want to do it in the first place? So this is a fundraiser for the 501c3 nonprofit called Z Girls. They create online programming for middle school girls that uh, instill self-confidence. Yeah. So I, I wanted to do it in support of them. I heard about the record about a year ago when my friend first set, he was the first man to do seven triathlons on yeah. seven continents in seven days. Yeah. And he told me about it. He was like, Kelsey, you should try to be the first woman to do it. Great. And once it was like kind of stuck in my head, I was I just have been thinking about it nonstop since. Okay, so logistically, where'd you start? I started in Rio de Janeiro. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Then Lisbon, Portugal. So so let's talk Rio first. Yes. So tell me about your experience there. Rio was very hot. Yeah, I, I was sweating rivers. <laughs> so and tell me about what exactly you're doing. So how many miles do you run? How many miles do so you swim? So it's an Olympic distance triathlon. So 1.5 k swim. Okay, first, is that the first? First, yep, 40K bike, which is 24.8 miles. Wow. A 10K run, which is 6.2 yeah. miles. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, so you went from Rio to? To Lisbon, Portugal. Mm -hmm. So I had a nine hour uh, red eye. So that's when I, most of the sleep that I got was on the plane. Wow. In between destinations. Yeah. Do you have like a support team? like? family and friends who are helping organize this for you? I had a lot of support throughout the entire year that I was planning it. Yeah. I went alone. I traveled alone. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and I was really just sprinting through airports the entire time. So if I had a team, it probably would have been harder. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to Tangiers and tell me, th Tangier. that's where you got hit by a car? I got hit by a car, yes. <laughs> I got a flat tire. I, I had a lot of things go wrong in Tangier, and also everything went perfectly. So... You got hit by a car. Let's not go over that here. So what happened exactly? So I was going through a roundabout and there... You're driving, you're walking. I was on my bike okay. going through a roundabout and during a During the course of the... During the race, yes. Okay. And I was following a lead car. There was a triathlon team in Tangier who was amazing. They came out and supported me through every aspect of the race. Nice. Yeah. So I was following their lead car and another car came up behind me and tried to exit the roundabout as I was still going through. Give me a little tap. <laughs> wow. It was okay. I caught myself. I clipped out of my pedals. Yeah. Caught myself before I fell over and then just kept going and was kind of like, Wow. Was that, okay, I got hit. All right, the worst thing happened. Now I can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you said beforehand the flat tire. After but that, I got a flat tire. But you able to get to the start. Okay. Yeah. Well, the flat tire happened 32K into the bike, the 40K bike. And so the support team, I oh, just waved them down. Oh, the bike. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so I waved them down. I'm like, hey, I have a flat. So they're like, okay, get in the car. Stop your watch. Get in the car. We'll go pick up another bike. We went to some random person's apartment in Tangier. <laughs> Got the other bike. Wow. Went back to the same spot and then finished the race. Wow. Okay, so after Tangier, where'd you go? After Tangier, I went to Muscat, Oman, which another place where the people were just above and beyond welcoming and supportive. And it was amazing. This was the point in the race where I was like, hit a wall. It turned into a zombie. I was <laughs> well, I sleep understand. deprived, yeah. tired. Are you yeah. looking at maps here? Is that what you're doing? I am looking at the world record requirements in this okay. picture to make sure that I was meeting. I'd have two witnesses signed off on each of the destinations, okay. photos in each of the destinations, and GPS uh, routing. Okay. When it comes to the events, what's happening here? Uh, this is my friend Suli, who ran uh, with me in Muscat. He, he's an aspiring professional runner. Um, and yeah, that was just part of the run course. I, I stopped a lot throughout the race to take photos. I called it party pace. Uh -huh. this, this isn't a race where I'm like really worried about how fast I go. It was okay. more conversational, more, taking that's photos, great. having fun, Oh, enjoying. I love this idea yeah. now. So it's not really about being the fastest. Right, right? fastest about, to the airport, not fastest to the finish line. I see, <laughs> I understand now. I, and then you clearly made a lot of friends along the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, okay, and then after that? After that, was, after Muscat was Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, I had seven hours there. 
My f so my flight was canceled and rescheduled. So this ended up being something where I had to hurry at the last minute, landed at 6.50 a.m., got out of the airport, like sprinted through customs, got out, <laughs> did the triathlon, wow. got back to the airport, and I ha actually had an hour to spare at the airport. Oh, wow. I was just disappointed I didn't get out and do more fun things. You, like explore the city. Yeah, then right? I went all the way to Sydney and didn't get the chance to see everything. Yeah, and then the, your last stop? Was Malibu, California, which okay. is a place I've lived before. I have a really great community there. My family all came down, so yeah, that was a fun one. What, what is the most challenging? Is it the swimming? Is it the biking? Is it the running? The most challenging is the mental headspace you have to get into. Uh, it's not the, even the physical part. Wh what, what do you do to get into that headspace I, that you So I worked with a mindset coach leading up to this. Oh. I did a lot of breath work, a lot of just getting back to feeling centered and not letting things feel completely out of control. It's like you control what you can control, right. and the rest you got to just let it go. If I miss my flight, i got to let it go. I get hit yeah, by a car. because you can't control that. Right, yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. What would you say would be a couple highlights? Give me, like, your favorite moments. Uh, my favorite moments, oh, my gosh. There, Is there one that stands out? I don't you? think I could. I couldn't pick a favorite country. I couldn't. Right. There were just so many. I think, it, like, the fact that the people, especially Muscat and Tangier, I didn't realize that they were all going to show up the way they, they did. As in they showed up to support everybody. Yeah, in, like they picked me up at 1 o'clock in the morning. They had a banner in Tangier. They had a banner in my hotel waiting for me. Oh, they had wow. gone through and put snacks in my hotel for me. Like, And a lot of this, so I hadn't met any of these people before. Right. I wasn't expecting. How did they know what was going on? Because it's been, a big event. Well, I'd been messaging with people and saying, hey, I'm doing this thing. If you'd like to come out and race with me. but. I'm a stranger from the other side of the world. Right. Like, I'm like just crossing my fingers, like I hope these people actually show up. Yeah. And the fact that they not only showed up, but like went above and beyond and were handing me, they were like pushing bananas on me, like eat your bananas, yeah. eat some gels, here's some water. Like it was just overwhelmingly nice. Yeah. yeah. So do you get to eat whatever you want? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I ate a lot of airplane food. Oh, yes. well, that doesn't Which I good. loved, honestly. <laughs> you love airplane food? I, I mean, it tasted delicious, yes. <laughs> Compared to? <laughs> Compared to, well, just being, getting off of the, getting off the triathlon, getting onto right. the plane and getting served airplane food. I'm like, yes, I'm starving. I'll take it. <laughs> wow. So now what is next for you? Next up is I want to do seven triathlons on seven continents <laughs> in seven days. You didn't learn enough already? No, I really have had this dream to do a swim in Antarctica. This initially was supposed to be a, a seven triathlons in seven continents in seven days. Yeah. I lost the permit back in January to be able to swim oh, yeah, in to Antarctica. Oh, wow, you have to have a permit. Okay. Yeah, and because there's bird flu going on, so there was risk of oh, contamination wow. with the penguins down there. Yeah. Yeah. So and you, got, you have no injuries. No injuries, no yeah, problem. I know that's what is actually shocking to me, is that I'm not injured and I feel pretty good. That is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. So you know what we're going to do is put information on our website at k2.com about you and your race and the, the um, charity that you're, you're raising funds awesome. for. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Thanks so much awesome. for having me. Yeah, you bet. You have to come back. I will. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.